All right, welcome. Um, to start off, can you please introduce yourself and the position that you're running for? Hi, my name is Chise Abago, and I'm running for the Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion of USG. All right, great. So first, can you describe um, any positions in USG you may have held or your experience in student government? Yeah, I was a first year representative of USG this year, and I was in the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And so like just in my position, I helped a lot with just like contacting advisors, working with faculty members, um, working with other organizations, listening to concerns of just like first year students, and then just like getting to know like, you know, the class as well. And then like just later talking to like upperclassmen, hearing their perspective on things, and then just bringing it back to diversity and inclusion and creating initiatives regarding people's concerns, collaborating with people, and just like currently just like creating new ones. So yeah. All right, great. So tell me about your platform. Why do you want to run for this position? Yeah, of course. So at least for diversity and inclusion, it was first, when I first came into the school, they mentioned the diversity and inclusion committee and they were planning on just making it for one person. And so at least for diversity and inclusion, um, at least like going to a predominantly white high school, um, and I didn't really take that many like leadership positions in the form of like student government. Like I was part of like the Black Student Union, like co-president and like Maudie went and other clubs. But I think just like in college, I really wanted to take the time to like try student government. And so they were planning on just like, like kind of like making diversity inclusion just like one person. And so for during that first general assembly meeting, I really just like spoke my opinions and just like expressed like my passion for diversity inclusion because a lot of the issues regarding diversity inclusion, they, they may see, be seen as broad, but there's so many issues, especially for like, you know, international students, like mixed race students, like underrepresented minority students and like LGBTQ students, like students with disabilities that all affect people that like I just also like had a perspective on because of the stuff that I also like experienced and witnessed in my high school that I also just wanted to make a change in like a big college campus. So at least for me, I just was, wanted to be like a part and just like help in the community. I wanted to like learn more about Ohio, speak to like colleges within Ohio, really have a platform to just be like a mentor and guide for students and just be someone who people can talk to about their concerns. Because like as anybody, I also just like really wanted that help in high school. And I want to be that type of like help for students in like college. All right, great. So you've been part of the DNI committee. Um, can what do you think is one thing that the DNI committee has done well so far this year, and perhaps something that you'd change if you became the VP? Yeah, of course. So at least some initiatives that we have been working on that has been well has just been the student advocacy student advocacy group. Sorry, and then for like the student advocacy group, we did like a lot with. Um, Sorry, we worked a lot with just like making it like a crisis intervention, like hotline system that like students will be a part of. And then we already got approved by advisors. We spoke about, um, I spoke about the actual like um, initiative during our USG meeting. And then we just like had a lot of people come in with questions, come with like, oh, like other like cool ideas to bring into the actual like student advocacy group idea. And hopefully, and then like, we're just currently working on the actual team now because we brought it up to advocacy fair and had students who are also interested in helping. So yeah, that's just like one of our like big accomplishments. And then another accomplishment is just working on just like having um, organizations and executives of other clubs have um because there's not really like a diversity like kind of like meeting that they have in the beginning of the year that's like not really like consistent and so what we're working on is community standards where um people who are part of like um advisors so like the lgbtq center the women's center um multicultural affairs would come speak to students and just like basically um like talk about like things regarding diversity and inclusion and talk about these type of things that they should be incorporating into their actual clubs because it should be something that like other execs um including usg should definitely just be aware of and try to like learn and understand and know what to do in the time of like a crisis and then at least for some other initiatives that i was really happy in starting uh, at least for running for a first year rep Although I was very new to USG and just the school in general, it was just really awesome to see it be like coming into action like currently because like, you know, I'm starting to get used to it, speaking to advisors, learning how to like work that process. So the swap shop idea is something that I'm just really excited to start, which is basically um, like think about it like a thrift store, but instead of like clothes, which we're also working on, um, this would be more of like student materials. It can be like with like um, dorm room, things like that, that students can donate and then like hopefully be able to like, you know, like kind of like purchase like kind of like a thrift store for like cheaper prices. Because at least for me, I know a lot of like concerns that I've heard from students is having to Uber places that would be like super expensive or like have to go all the way to Target or like, I don't know, like Costco and et cetera to just get like basic 
school supplies, housing materials for just like coming into like their dorms. And so we're just working on that right now and hopefully it'll be like in action at the end of this year so students can donate. And then in the fall semester, students are able to like, you know, start that whole entire process of the swap shop. So those are just like a few initiatives that like our, our small like diversity inclusion committee has done, which is I think is really awesome because we started off like big in numbers, but it's definitely decreased in size because a lot of students have left. But I'm just like really glad that I had the opportunity to work with the people who were just like really passionate about this and really wanted to make change on campus. Yeah, so the swap shop would be like an expansion of the physical resource center or like based off of that idea sort of thing or? Yeah, so like at least for like other like other colleges, um, they kind of have like something similar with like a thrift store in a way where like students kind of like, you know, like, you know, like for like thrift stores, you like usually just like purchase things for like cheaper prices. Right. Um, so we kind of like just want to add that on campus where it's like more accessible to students within like the campus range. And they can also have like access to like, you know, eye clickers, like journals, lab journals, lab coats, et cetera, maybe like refrigerators for like housing, like like notebooks, just like basic things that at least for me, like an eye clicker was something that I was, I had to like order on Amazon for like $50. And so like, <laughs> yeah, so like just like getting them for like cheaper prices, like even renting them can also just be a great opportunity for like students to actually get the like supplies that they need for their classes. Yeah, God knows fun. that crew students throw away so much stuff at the end of each year. When <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So as VP of DNI, you would be part of, of USG's exec board as well. So is there something about USG as a whole that you'd like to improve, whether it be in the scope of your position or some operational thing or just like the types of things that USG as a whole you know, tries to accomplish? Um, I think something that I really want to accomplish for USG is definitely just having the, like more like interactions between um, exec and committees. And so um, at least during this time um, is, as first year, I was part of the diversity inclusion committee, but I try to like reach out to exec boards to like hear their perspective on things and how that type of exec position is run, look at like the student life committee. And I just really want to like try to collaborate and like kind of like join in different committees. So like people cannot just be in their individual like bubbles because like, although like we all are in separate committees, there's a lot of things that we can do that can intertwine and like work together and like create like better like progress, more communication, just like that can like really help with like starting initiatives and getting like words out and things like that. So like, I definitely just want more like collaborations within like specific like committees itself. And then also just, um, I would really just like like to continue just like creating a better like system in terms of like talking to like advisors and faculties about like issues because the gap is definitely there. And so I definitely just want to close that gap and just like have more meetings with um, fac um, faculty members and advisors of like different like um, not committees, but different like I'm forgetting the word right now, but like different things like on campus, like, I, campus yeah, just like, tech. like, for example, like, I don't know, like sports, like Bon Appetit, just like getting to meet, like work with the advisors, like one on one, like way more frequently. I know that they're, I'm part of the, um, at least like active member of the food subcommittee. And so we get to work with the Bon Appetit, like faculty members. And so that's like a really cool idea. And I think that if we're able to like continue things like that, where we're like one-on-one -on -one with faculty members of different departments and speak to them weekly about like solutions and concerns about students, it can really just help get a lot of like word out, have their like faculty members could like listen to perspective of students because I know it's also hard for them. Um, to just like know what students like students are thinking of sometimes because like there's like a very big gap so I definitely just want to close the gap between faculty members and students. All right great all right so let's move on to some DNI related questions so as you were saying um, earlier this year there were discussions about potentially scrapping the DNI committee and just creating a chief DNI officer um, with the argument being that like the committee is generally understaffed and that like there should be diversity and inclusion in all the committees of USU not just siloed, siloed into one uh, mm -hmm. thing so uh, what are your feelings about this? You sort of alluded to it earlier, but could you expand on that? Like, in what ways would you want DNI to be promoted throughout USG, and what's the best way to do that? Well, I think for you, um, DNI, it's you know, it's like a very like big important topic. And I think it's just also having a collaboration of other committees, like, you know, just like joining the DNI committee and also just like a collaboration with like other like committee members, just like in general to work on initiatives together. Because I think a big um, issue is just like um, having people stay in USG, because I know a lot of people have other commitments and other things that are like they're also on their schedule. 
And so I think that's just like a very big like issue as to why people can't make it to meetings. People can't um, don't have like the time that they were like willing to like um, that they wanted to put in like to like the actual like things like such as diversity inclusion committee. So like our like actual committee with smaller numbers. And so I just feel like, especially when you have like numerous perspectives on such a broad issue, it really leads to progress. And it shouldn't just be given to one person because an idea of diversity, like for me, although like I'm running to be vice president, my perspective is much different to someone with another like identity and like background. And so collaboration is just something that's very important, especially for like, um, things that like don't even regard my own identity and it can get me a like, perspective on their ideas and then we can work together to create change and progress. So having it like really like just having just like one person be in charge of the entirety of diversity and inclusion shouldn't be like the solution, but rather have students who have like the time commitment and have the passion to continue working on it all throughout the year. And also having people of different committees, like I don't know, communications committee. I know like I worked with Sedona who um, with CISL to work on the Ohio State Bill and working with members of like the Ohio State University USG on like initiatives regarding diversity and inclusion. So things like that where like other students of different committees could work together into like with the diversity and inclusion committee to create initiatives and create change both in campus and just in the Ohio community as well. I agree. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. Um, so um, at the Q&A with President Kaler, one USG representative brought up the fact that much of crew is not very friendly towards handicapped and disabled students, you know, there'd be the infrastructure, like, you know, on our online sort of thing. And that was something that President Kaler was actually surprised to hear, it seemed. Um, so <laughs> is this something that perhaps the USG needs to bring up more often or, you know, is, are there certain ways that we can bring this to the administration's attention more frequently so they actually know this is a problem? Yeah, I agree. So like, as mentioned, like also before, like the gap between students and like administration is not really great, especially when a lot of students' concerns aren't really just like publicized to like faculty members. And even when they are, I think like a big issue is that although many, like m many of it wasn't really like, at least for me, just like um, many issues that like I may, may have addressed, which I wish I did more was just like speaking to more people of different communities. Like if I had the time, I definitely would have wished to spoken to more communities on campus. And so something at least I really want to work on is just like having like more like student like input, definitely trying to like um, have like Google Forms where students can put their input, but also just like definitely just meet more consistently with administration to work on issues, especially when something like disability is given an F and the own president of the school doesn't know about it. Yeah. So like even, I remember for another question I asked President Kaler was about, cause they were mentioning, uh, oh, there's like 900 new faculty members that, that were added to campus. And my question was regarding how many of those faculty members are representing of an underrepresented minority group. And the question was answered. So things like that, where it's like, although you can put so much blame on the, on the administration, something like student government gives students the chance to make that change. Because at the end of the day, like, although you can really express your problems to administration, the main thing, especially just learning from high school, the main thing that like starts action is within yourself when you're given those positions of leadership, it gives you the opportunity to make that change. And so, although like, yes, I remember in high school, I too also just like addressed it. And I was like, oh, you need to do this and do that. And I think my biggest regret was just not being in a certain like leadership position that allowed me to make it. But at least for like a vice president of diversity and inclusion, it will allow me to close the gap between faculty members. It allowed me to get those problems like addressed and spoken to. And let's just like get those like, you know, like initiatives and collaborate with students. And I really just want to like try to like get to know students, learn about the like issues, go to club meetings, organizations, things also in the um, Cleveland community, because that's also just like something that's just like disconnected between students in Cleveland. Just like close those gaps and try to just like make change, especially if like administration is not going to do it, then I get like I definitely just wanted to be the person to like make those change and work with students to make it. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. President Kaler, I was at that meeting. He, you know, he brought up the the fact that faculty, some would be, you know, underrepresented minority groups and stuff like that. But he didn't really give any specific numbers yeah. in that regard or anything like that. So that was interesting. Um, another thing that was brought up at that meeting, though, and I want to get your thoughts on, are um, mm -hmm. there so one USG rep uh, brought up the idea of a potential residence, uh, res residential community specifically for BIPOC students. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I wanted to know what your feelings on that were. 
I definitely agree with this idea. We're just trying to, like, I know a lot of students also just felt like interest to be regarding that idea. And so we're trying to like work on like a similar like, initiative with that now. And especially with like other students who are like interested about it, because especially like a lot of people may, like, I remember at first when it was brought up, people were saying like, oh, is this like segregation, which is not the case at all. It's more of like a safe space space for students of color to really just like get like you know like the housing needs to like speak to like have like advisors who are also of underrepresented groups who are P like POC and like kind of like have like a mentoring guide while also just like being able to like you know just like like um be like in a safe and like welcoming environment which is not saying that like you know like I live in Clark Tower which I've just like you know I had the opportunity to live there it's really fun and all but like I think for other students especially when you want to get close to your identity and learn more about like other students like them who have similar like you know like backgrounds and similar stories and identities allows you to connect more with the students on campus and especially with such a small like student of color population <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me it just gives students of color to really just you know get to learn from each other like learn people's like cultures and identities and just like live in like you know just like live and collaborate with each other so it's something that's also just like in a lot of other colleges and I remember speaking to students who um, also were coming to case and don't really know much about the school and want to apply and were asking that same question and so just like I feel like that's something that should definitely be added to Case Western, especially if it has such a like a small student of color like body, and it's something that's incorporated in a lot of colleges around the world. I definitely think that it should be added to Case because it can make a lot of progress. All right, great. Um, all right, so my last DNI related question is: um, mm -hmm. so currently, the state of Ohio is considering a bill that would punish. Well, first, it would ban public universities, but it would punish private universities that have diversity, equity, and inclusion training for their for employees and students, such as our you know diversity three hundred and sixty program and stuff like that. So, what actions would you encourage the administration to take if that bill were to become law? I mean, obviously, we can't you know change the state legislature, but um, is there a way that you'd hope the administration would react? Well, at least um, some ideas when we're speaking to like professors, I believe I have to like, um, sorry, there's like a specific poster that I sent um, out to students regarding like underrepresented like students on campus having the opportunity to speak about their experience to other under underrepresented like first come first year students. And so like, I think just like trying, especially if they're not gonna be, if it's like things like that, especially like, I know there's also like the voting bill where it doesn't give students outside of Ohio the chance to like vote. And that just like allows like a lot of just like, you no know, like a lot of like lost opportunities. And so especially with diversity inclusion, I think um, like regarding the question, I think there just needs to be more like, um, opportunities where students are able to meet each other, like learn about different cultures, especially if they want to take something like like this serious of like of, a, of an issue down. Because diversity three hundred and sixty is something that really just like helps students like learn about you know like these type of issues that they may not even be aware of. And so I think other ideas is just having more conversations, having more like ways where people can learn about other people's cultures. Just like having students like attend more events. I think that's just something that's very important on campus. And it just gave me the opportunity to learn about different cultures and like, communities that I may not have like been exposed to in like in high school and like in my past. So I think just like advocating for that more and also having the administration be a part of like going to those type of events so they too can also just like meet students and talk about their experiences in their communities as well. I think just closing that gap and just like also like advocating um, for expressing people's cultures in a way that, you know, like is fine for like that, like um, that they're trying to like take down. It will just be like a possible possibility for like this issue. But like, it's unfortunate, especially, I mean, I'm from like California. So like here and like stuff like this, it's like surprising. <laughs> but like, I mean, like with every, like even like throughout history, like there's so many things where students were like, you know, like administration would always try to take down things that like allow progress, but something that like ha communities have done and have strived doing, even though people have tried to be putting them down is work around the system by recreating like new type of ideas and ways that even like the system too gets mad about and tries to continue closing those barriers. And so I think just like the connections that I've already made with students and just like trying to create change with something like student government is something that just needs to be like you know continued so yeah I just think that that type of like gap yeah I mean I know personally just uh I feel just exposure to all these different groups on campus really helps people open their minds more so than 
even diversity three sixty can at times. So it's I think that's an interesting thought. Um, but yeah, to end, um, this is more of a fun question, but uh, what do you love about Case Western Reserve? And then what's one thing you wish you could change about it? It can be like a silly thing or it could be a serious thing, you know, whatever you choose. Oh, um, honestly, something I like about Case is I just like the events that they like have on campus. Like I've been attending like a lot of just like cultural events. Like recently, my friends and I have, um, went to the Indian Student Association event, and then now we're gonna go to the Korean Student Association event this Friday. And then there's like a lot of events like that. And there's even like the African wedding. We're like, just like a lot of like times we used to see like different like dances, a lot of like food. I was exposed to so much like different food on campus that I didn't really expect. And it's just like amazing. And then I just think that like, just like meeting like a lot of like international like students as well. Like just like, I think that's just like the whole part of the college experience, just meeting like people that you like never met, like like met before learning about different like things and like communities. I think that was just like really cool that I just like had the opportunity to do like at Case and the just organizations and clubs who are passionate about it. Um, I don't know. I think one thing that will change about Case I think there needs to be like, okay, I know it's like a STEM school, but when you look at like the PBL building, you expect it, like it's such a nice like building, like overall, like it's super like cool and things like that. And then you really see like the STEM buildings and like, you know, they're nice and all, but like, they're not as good as a PBL building or like even like the nursing building too. Mm -hmm. Like it looks like an Apple store, but has like <laughs> an entire building. So I would just say, just like, you know, there needs to be more hype for the STEM buildings on campus, the mm -hmm. same as there is for PBL. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know we're getting a new research, like $300 million research building. I don't know if students are going to be allowed in that. So here's hoping. Yeah, so. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, that's all the questions I have. So um, do you have any message that you'd like to send to the student body at Case or just the observer? Oh, um, <laughs> I don't really have any. Like, just think, both oh, <laughs> I mean... I would mean, vote for Cheese A, but also the Mario movie is came out. There's also the Spider-Man 2 movie and the Barbie movie. So, you know, take a break, chill. I know that finals is soon, but do a bit self-care. I know I'm going to watch like some movie like when finals is over. So definitely just do a little self-care day. <laughs> I can get behind that. All right. Well, <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. All right. So um, to start off, can you please introduce yourself and uh, say what position you're running for? Um, I'm Fatima Sagir, and I'm running for the position of Vice President of Diversity and Inclusion. Great. So um, talk about what positions you've held in USG so far, your previous USG experience, that sort of thing. I'm not going to lie. I actually haven't held any position really in USG. I mean, I started off my freshman year kind of like trying to figure things out for myself. And as of recent, I've kind of been going more into like volunteering clubs. I was working under, um, I was heading a program under CISO called Lunch Buddies and it works with children and stuff. And I kind of really liked the fact that I was working for like the Cleveland community and I wanted to do more, which is why I want to get into USG now, because I feel like under USG, I can do more to help the community, not just on campus, but also in the city. All right, great. So um, what is your platform? What do you want to do as VP of DNI? Um, well, right now I heavily want to focus on allowing organizations to be more inclusive towards people of color, mainly black people on campus. I've noticed that a lot of clubs and even like sororities and stuff don't really have a lot of people of color, especially like the minorities on campus or even like have like representatives are part of like the LGBT community as well. And I mean, right now in USG, there's like around three black people, which is like crazy to me it, because it's just like the, I feel like we should have more of a voice, especially since a lot of these chains pertain to us. And another thing is I also want to work on is like funding of specific clubs. I feel like a lot of clubs have a lot of funding while some don't. One of my friends, she's um in nursing and she was she's expected to like host a formal and the only money they were giving was a thousand dollars, which isn't even enough to cover everything they need, which is really unfair. And a lot of clubs use the money towards like insomnia cookies, for example. And I feel like it could be used in a much better way. All right. 
Um, so even being outside of USG, though, I'm sure you still have opinions on what they've been doing. So what do you think is one good thing that USG has done over the past year and something that you, you perhaps want to change? Right now, what I really liked was like the whole whole thing that was kind of going on which kind of was controversial with like the palestine israel thing um i kind of liked how they kind of took initiative and did something that controversial but they were like willing to go out of like everyone's comfort zone and do what they think was right even though it did go against president kaler and i kind of enjoyed the fact that it showed how much power us as the students had compared to like the actual people in power if that makes sense and I don't know, I kind of like heavily just want to focus on, I want to start off small, just like m allowing more, allowing like underrepresented clubs to get more attention and more funding and more support than like larger clubs who don't really do as much, if that makes sense. All right, that makes sense. All right, so moving on to DNI related questions. So there was a potential USG constitutional amendment um, to completely scrap the DNI committee and just replace it with a chief DNI officer instead of like being vice president of a committee. Um, because, you know, some were saying like the committee is understaffed historically um, or that, you know, DNI should be more integrated throughout all the different committees at USG rather than just being sequestered into one. But then, of course, there was people who supported, you know, DNI being its own committee. Um, so do you have any personal feelings about that? Or in general, what are ways that you think diversity and inclusion should be promoted both throughout USG and the university as a whole? I do believe that diversity and inclusion should have a committee just due to the fact that it is so much power and I don't think it should be fallen under one person, especially considering the campus is so diverse. I feel like we need more voices and more perspectives and different ideas. Hi. I'm... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you done? All right. Um, oh, so yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. All right. I get like anxious and stuff like this. So I I was like, I struggled with, like articulating the things I want just because like I'm just nervous. Right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're it's fine. It's all good. Um, so yeah, other than, um, you know, racial diversity and stuff like that, during a Q&A with President Kaler, a USG representative brought up the fact that much of crew is not very friendly to handicapped and disabled students. And he was actually surprised by that, saying that we were complying with the ADA and all this stuff. So we he was surprised that we'd gotten like a bad report on that sort of thing. Is this something that USG should be bringing up more often with the administration? If so, what should we focus on, if you have any thoughts on that? So with that, I do think it should be brought up more just because like it, it is falls under inclusion and I feel like everyone deserves a voice, including people who are like handicapped. But I haven't really looked much into it. One thing I did notice, though, was with a lot of dorms, especially like the older ones, there's no like handicap button, if that makes sense. And same things with like the elevators. They're very like in bad shape and like just seem unsafe. And it's just like I I feel like we should just work on fixing things so like the a lot of the students can get into different parts of campus it's, they shouldn't be restricted to like specific areas if that makes sense yeah got it all right so uh next question is uh the state of ohio is currently considering a bill that would punish private universities that have diversity equity that sort of and inclusion training of both employees and students um, such as our Diversity 360. So if that bill were to become law, um, is what would you encourage the administration to do? Would uh, like What actions do, do you hope the administration would take and what do you think USG should you know take a stand on about? I would hope the administration takes a stand against it. Similar with USG, I feel like we we shouldn't we shouldn't be forced to limit ourselves or censor ourselves for the sake of what these politicians have to say because in the end if we want anything to change we have to re move out of our comfort zone and go against them yeah all right so um outside of usg just case western as a whole is there what what's something that you really like about case western both as a university and also a student body and that's what what's something that you wish you could change about it as well right now i i'm enjoying how friend like open everyone is to different ideas I've I've been like it's it's been compared to like my high schools my high schools like predominantly white it is nice to like 
have a voice in a way and have a say in the things I want, which I'd never had to before, or have like people actually listen to me and care about my opinion. But a thing that I would like to change is like I've mentioned before, a lot of like clubs here are like a lot of like the people in charge of these clubs are usually the majority on campus, which doesn't really push towards the fact that this campus is as diverse and open as it seems. Same things with like sororities and fraternities. A lot of them are heavily um, are majority either white or like Asian. And then it's just like it's like the majority of what the campus is instead of including a lot of like minority students and it's just it doesn't feel as comfortable as it should be all right great um do you have any um last thoughts or statement that you'd like to give to the student body or just the observer editorial board um not really i just <laughs> i'm sorry i i feel so nervous and this is i feel like i did so bad but i'm sorry <laughs> You're, you're doing fine um all right well then that's all the questions i have so unless you there's something that you want to bring up um that, that'll be it thanks so much for coming in yeah that's all thank you so much though <laughs> nice, yeah. to, meet you. nice to meet you bye